Red nets represent thermal portions of the design. Blue nets are the digital portions, and black nets are analog. When I click the running man to start the simulation, a dialog pops up that allows users to set the simulation parameters before the simulation starts. For this example, I will do a time domain simulation and set the end time to 400 milliseconds. I can also specify what waveforms to capture in the database. The default is for the top level waveforms. You can also set all waveforms so that we capture all of the details of the parameters inside the models, such as the variables inside the VHDL AMS models. And when the simulation is done, the waveform viewer is automatically launched with the waveforms loaded and ready to view. The output waveform is an amplification of the input waveform with about 7 volts peak to peak for the output signal. Seeing this, the circuit seems to be working correctly. So now, let's take a look at the thermal performance of the circuit. What is the temperature of the amplifier? As I mentioned before, we have two speaker options we want to design for, a 16-ohm speaker and an 8-ohm speaker. This simulation was run on our 16-ohm speaker scenario, and the temperature starts at 40 degrees C and reaches about 120 degrees C or so. It has not reached the 150 degree temperature threshold that the thermal protection part of the circuit is set for, so the circuit has not turned off, which is good. The amplifier circuit seems to be working properly, electrically and thermally. Now let's simulate our 8 ohm speaker scenario. Next, I will run the simulation again using the same simulation settings I used in the previous run. With the circuit altered for the alternate 8 ohm speaker, there are sections where the amplifier stops working. Why does it stop working? Let's check the thermal protection part of the circuit. We see that using the 8 ohm speaker, the temperature exceeds the 150 degrees C threshold, so the thermal protection shuts down the amplifier. Then, once the amplifier cools off enough, the circuit starts up again but overheats and the cycle continues. We need to find a way to get our 8 ohm speaker to perform properly. Let's look at our circuit and determine which elements most affect the temperature. To do this, we will run a sensitivity analysis to determine the effects of the element values of R1, R2, R3, R4, the speaker impedance, and R therm of our thermal circuitry. We will run the simulation varying each parameter by 1%, or the perturbation. This analysis will do one simulation each for the six parameters plus a nominal simulation, meaning that there will be a total of seven simulations. Again, the results are loaded into our waveform analyzer. This will create a new set of graphics since the axes are different than the waveform currently displayed. Viewing the results of our simulation shows that our amplifier temperature is most sensitive to the impedance of the speaker, then the thermal impedance of the heatsink, or R therm, then R2, R1, R3, and R4 in that order. To read our graph in more detail, the plus and minus signs in the brackets indicates how the temperature would behave by increasing the parameter value. 